Osge, it's great to catch up with you here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. You know, you and I have been talking millimeter wave uh, since before there were any commercial deployments and Qualcomm still pushing the envelope in the space. I know you all recently made some upgrades to the prototype network in San Diego. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about those and kind of what they mean for end users. Sure, it's great to see you again as well. You know, it's good to see you here every year. And as you know, every year we, we make improvements to our, our network and we've been showcasing new features, new use cases on the network. This year we wanted to not only show new use cases and new features, but also pull everything together. So we're showcasing a, a, an advanced millimeter wave deployment. So what a deployment could be with all those features we've shown in the past, plus new features, you know, how, you know, what new use cases we can enable. So some of the new features we've, we've looked at are things like enabling multi-user MIMO to increase the network capacity of the, of the system, especially in high capacity areas as the density starts growing, things like uh, stadiums or hotspots. And then we, we want to also enable new use cases like XR devices on our network, better mobility, more robustness. But on top of that, we want to make this cost effective. And that's where we start bringing in some of the older network nodes that we developed, uh, things like repeaters that we did in the past, new devices like wireless access and backhaul, as well as future devices that enable a cost effective toolbox for, for operators to make uh, deployments. So we really want to have this deployed and reduce the cost uh, for operators to enable the potential of this uh, new spectrum. Yeah, give us a little more color on the use of repeaters. You know, to your point about cost effectiveness and efficiency of a millimeter wave deployment, repeaters could be really, really helpful. So what are, what are you all working on? Yeah, so we're, we're actually, we've developed certain uh, new types of repeaters ourselves, but more importantly, we've worked with the ecosystem. You know, we, there are a lot of number of startups that are in this space. There are a number of companies in this space. We work with operators with those startups, making sure that the ecosystem system is healthy and we bring some of those options into our network, test it ourselves, in addition to some of the own solutions that, that we develop. So some of these are the traditional repeaters, amplify forward type of repeaters. There's a smart repeater which we showcased a couple of years ago but now it's actually standardized and that's on our network, we see the benefit of that. And then there's new options like wireless access and backhaul which is coming up, uh, standardization will come up in release 19, so the next release and that's uh, an additional type of network node, it's, it's more of a layer three relay that provides more flexibility for the operator. So it's another type of relay. And then there's of course more futuristic looking uh, uh, you know, network nodes or re repeators like reconfigurable intelligent surfaces or just intelligent surfaces that we're also evaluating. Yeah, we, we got to talk more about reconfigurable intelligent surfaces. I, I think this is just really fascinating when you think about propagation characteristics of millimeter wave and uh, a very like elegant way to do a coverage extension. So what are you all working on? Yes, so that, that's an exciting area and it's uh, you know, something that I believe will you know, be commercialized in the next couple of years, especially as we head towards, towards 6G. But certainly there are companies that work on it now, including us. Uh, and what that is uh, in, in general is, is essentially a mirror that can be configured by the base station. So it's a passive device. You can think of it as a uh, base station controlling the incoming angle and the reflection direction, the shape of the, re uh, the, the reflection. And then once in a while reconfigure it to address certain coverage holes. Now the advantage of this is that it's passive, so it's low power. And the future, my, what I envision is that this will be battery operated, by right? solar, solar operated. So not only will you not need fiber, but you won't need power as well. And given that it's a small size, passive solar operated, you can attach it to many uh, surfaces and provide coverage. So this is really a, an extremely power efficient and cost effective way for future coverage uh, you know, enhancement and coverage all. So it's, it's an exciting area. You know, and we've been talking with your colleagues about 5G advanced and kind of the practical steps that get us to 5G advanced and longer term on to 6G. How are you thinking about millimeter wave when this kind of longer continuum? And I'm particularly thinking about this idea of uh, sensing. Yeah, so once, once the, the networks are deployed and, and when they will absolutely get deployed, they're starting to get deployed you know, around the world. It enables new use cases. So it enables use cases like sensing. So at 28 gigahertz, we have the ability to not only provide data, 
um, you know, to the existing, to, to use it to phones or to the other devices, but now we can actually jointly also do sensing. So using the existing data signals, we can actually sense the environment. So sense objects in space that don't necessarily have a phone or a modem. So these, these can be blockers in space or reflectors in space. And at the, you know, at the extreme case, we can actually sense the whole environment. We can create a whole digital twin of the environment and use that to provide new services or to feed us, so feed into new services or use that to enhance our communication. For instance, feeding into our beam management and improve the beam management, improve the, the reliability of our millimeter wave network. So that's the exciting part that hasn't really taken off yet, but certainly by the time we in the 6G time frame, joint communication sensing will be a, a great new feature. Yeah, you know, when you just look at what's happening commercially with millimeter wave, you feel like things are moving really slow, but when I get to catch up with you and really understand the R&D that's going on, it's just so uh, thrilling to see the momentum in the space. So I appreciate you sharing with me, Asuke. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's always a pleasure talking to you.